What's going on, guys? Welcome back. We have another healthy day of NHL action. Uh, we have a five-game uh, main slate and a one-game showdown that will start before the main slate. Uh, it's been a ton of fun to watch, and just getting uh, hockey back has been great. So let's dive right into the slate. Uh, I am going to start with the odds. If you are looking to get into our Discord channel, our NHL Premium Discord channel, you can do that through our VIP package, which is weekly or you can just pay for uh, the sport individually. You can find that below in the link. Uh, you'll get all my core plays. Uh, if you look here at the odds, um, I'm gonna just go over, I'm not gonna cover the showdown uh, between the Islanders and the Panthers. Um, it wouldn't be super DFS friendly anyway. Um, but I think, you know, the Predators at home, minus 140, uh, Toronto at home, minus 150. The Flames actually are favored on the road, and that I think might be a part of uh, Mark Scheifele being out, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Hurricanes are favored on the road as well against the Rangers, and the Wild and the Canucks are basically a pick 'em. Uh, and we don't have any over unders that are over five and a half, so there's not like a, just a smash game that you're targeting for goals. But what you'll see uh, coming up here is that there is some insane value just. Uh, in the mid range that are just just guys are just severely underpriced for their talent so I think there is definitely you can make a case that like going up to the studs here in the playoffs is huge because they're on the ice a lot but I think there's enough um, really good value in the middle to fit some of those studs as well all right let's start out um, at cent the center position I'm going to go position by position Austin Matthews is the most expensive at 8500 I think he is definitely viable. I think, uh, you know, his floor is probably eight to 10 because he's going to put a ton of shots on goal um, with a, with the ceiling of, you know, 25, if he hits a couple goals, I do like him here. Um, I think Tavares for, you know, 1400 cheaper is makes a little bit more sense to, uh, in salary. And then obviously I really like Ajo here, even on the road against the Rangers. Um, Zabinijad, I'm just, I'm just not really that excited about the Rangers against Carolina even at home here. Uh, I'm definitely not playing uh, Horvat or Pedersen. Um, they just looked awful in that first game. Maybe they rebound, but GPP only here. Um, Shifley is out, which brings in a value of um, Cop, who is right here, who centered um, uh, Blake Wheeler and Kyle Connor. And just even even if you didn't have you know the, any assists or anything like that you know 22 and a half minutes of ice time uh that's quite a bit uh so he's definitely going to be in that role um i do like derek stefan too at 3700 that just seems insanely cheap for his talent and then ryan johansson also really cheap uh he's a little bit more goal dependent goal or assist dependent uh trocheck as well i really like him for 4500 so there's a tons of value and obviously Sean Monahan, um, now that the, you know, that Winnipeg is down a man, um, you pair him with Johnny Goudreau and you have some really cheap correlation uh, with a ton of upside. So uh, that's kind of my targets in the center position. Um, I don't really see myself paying up for Matthews unless I just find enough salary, but there's enough guys below there like Ajo or um, Monahan or going down and using a value play like Cop. Uh, is definitely viable here. Let's go to wing where I don't see it as top heavy. Uh, Panarin, I think, had a goal last game, but I'm not really going back there. Um, Kyle Connor is viable, but I don't really love um, the disc, the uh, not discount, the um, little bit of depreciation in value just due to not having Shifley there. Um, Mitch Marner is a fine pairing with, uh, I think he's skating with Tavares. And then Nylander with uh, Matthews, and that could be reversed. But either, either way, um, I think they're in play. I'm just not super excited about Toronto in general. Um, Fiala has been insane for the Wild, um, but I do think he's overpriced still. Uh, so I'm going to move, be moving down here. Shnechnikov, or however you pronounce his name, uh, 6,300 had a hat trick last game. He's awesome. He's definitely in play. Compare him with Ajo. Uh, Taylor Hall. 6100 I just I can't even believe I'm saying that out loud 
Um, he had two assists last game, three shots on goal, 14 and a half fantasy points. Love him for 6,100. Even on the road against Nashville, I think um, this is a different Arizona team and a different Nashville team for that fact. I don't think it's the Nashville home team that only allows one goal a game every time they go out there. So uh, I like Taylor Hall quite a bit for the price. Johnny Goudreau, I mean, just ridiculously cheap. Now, again, he put down, he only put up three points last game. I would like to see the shots on goal total be higher just as a floor, but you know, he does have the potential for the five shots on goal game. But again, you're getting a home, um, or no, they're on the road, sorry. But it's a really good matchup for them. Um, this is why I'm saying you don't really need to go too expensive. You got Taylor all here at 6,100, Johnny Goudreau at 5,700, Forsberg at 5,600. Uh, Forsberg might be one of the most popular plays on the slate at 5,600. Then you even go down a little bit further, you got Blake Wheeler at 5,400, Cam Atkinson at 5,100, who I always love. You know, he had a goal and assist last game, um, but usually he's also a high volume shooter. So in a matchup against Toronto, that's just back and forth high pace. I really like Cam Atkinson as well at 5,100. Uh, Ehlers is going to see his role increase, just they need more scorers and without line eight and Shifley. So he's in play. Uh, Arvidsson and Duchesne are also really cheap here. Um, as we move down here, you will see, we will see some value come out when we get some new lineups that shuffle around, but Niederreiter uh, continues to be just underpriced. Um, 3,100, he's putting up the shots on goal. He doesn't really need the assist. I mean, if you're going to get, you know, eight to 10 points for someone for 3,100, that's phenomenal. Um, I know people don't really love to waste their winger spots always on a value play, but I think this is definitely a spot that you could do that. You could also use someone like Jordan Greenway, who is skating on the first line. Uh, he hasn't really had the stats yet to show for it, um, but he's definitely getting the ice time, and he is skating with that first group. Um, I think that's the extent of my value I want to point out right now. There, Obviously, there will be some more that come out. Um, Kapanen, Keiko. Uh, so if you are in our Discord channel, I'll be posting the lines prior to the game, so that way you are able to see that. Um, on defense, uh, Roman Yossi, 7,200. Can't argue against the guy. I mean, he is pretty insane. Um, the floor is there. Not only the assists, but the blocks and the shots on goal. He's got the double-double bonus always in play. Five shots on goal, three blocks. But 7,200 is just insane. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with, uh, Dougie Hamilton. If for some reason he's in, he is definitely in play. Um, looks like he's probably still out. Mark Giordano in a nice matchup. Um, I'd have to look back, but he was not listed on the first power play anymore. Um, but look at the block shots and shots on goal. He's got a ton of potential for just other stats. Um, and the ice time is a little bit down compared to what we're normally seeing out of Giordano. Um, but again, for the price tag at 5,700, it's way too cheap. Um, and then you move down to someone like Slavin, who's obviously the power play guy right now for Carolina. If Dougie Hamilton is out, if Hamilton is in, that bump, that makes, basically makes to me Slavin like a, a non-play at all. Um, Spurgeon uh, has had, had an awesome first game, two goals and one assist. That is definitely an outlier performance, but he's going to get heavy ice time. He's seeing power play action. Um, same with Sammy Vatnin. He's also getting that increased role just due to no Dougie Hamilton, two assists, three blocks. You're not going to see him put the shot on the shot on net a ton, but um, you know he's got a, he's a nice value as well. Dumba, Ekman, Larson, uh, Morrissey, Tyler Myers. These guys are all values. Um, Gustafson. Uh, I was you know people were going to him because he was listed on the first power play. But it looks like that he's really still not getting that much ice time. So he's probably a fade for me. Um, moving down here a little bit further, you know, I think like guys like Stetcher and Fattenberg who are in, um, Gardner, someone who always pops in the optimizers but just always is poor. So I would fade him. Cody Cece, I do like if he's in. I think he should be. Um, just has a nice floor. He's dead minimum price tag. Look at the, I mean, he's he's not going to get a ton of ice time right now, but he does have a floor. He's not going to probably get you zero. He might, and if he gets that three block bonus, you know, you take that um, 
take those points every day. So um, defense, I think you can kind of be balanced too and just live in this range. P oink being on the power play for Winnipeg is really nice. Um, if you're pairing up, you know, Toronto, you can use Morgan Riley or Tyson Berry, uh, Warinsky and Seth Jones. Seth Jones is always my preferred target, but uh, didn't play very